Okay, so where we last, last left off, we had successfully, well, located, I guess you could say, um, kind of, that was kind of a gimme. Um, we successfully located the data that we wanted to scrape. We did a quick inspection on it to see if it was organized in a way that made it seem likely for scraping, which in our case is going to be looking for things that are probably formatted basically as tables. Now, lucky for us, in a lot of cases, or unlucky in the sense that uh, maybe they would be in a spreadsheet format downloadable otherwise, um, a lot of tabular style data is published in actual tables, right, HTML tables on the web. Um, and as I mentioned in the last video, there is a wonderful library that can be used to parse this information and kind of target just the bits of the web page that we're interested in and ignoring everything else. Um, and the library is called Beautiful Soup. Um, so we'll take a look at this. Um, you guys will have a link to the documentation on this, um, but fortunately it's a pretty pretty straightforward library to use. Now, I could do this all in one file. I could do my scraping, i.e. my downloading and writing of the web page, and then my parsing, um, where I actually go for the information all in one place. I personally prefer to do them separately. I, I don't know, mentally for me they're separate tasks, but obviously it's ultimately up to you if you continue to do this, if you want to approach it a different way. For now though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, another new file, um, and I'm going to call this Apple Vitamin Parser, okay? And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import my, um, I'm going to import my library. So I'm going to say import um, Beautiful Soup. Now, because of the way Beautiful Soup is organized, our import statement is slightly different. Um, and, you know, this isn't something that you need to worry too much about in the sense that this is something that's going to be in the documentation of a particular library. If you need to use it, it's going to tell you how to do this download. Um, sorry, you, you, you can download it, it's going to tell you how to do the import statement, right? It'll give you examples. But for now, we're going to say from BS4 import beautiful soup. And of course, the first thing, um, or not necessarily the first thing that I want to do, um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to open my target file, right? I want to start reading in the data. Um, and the syntax for doing this with beautiful soup is a little bit different. Um, it's a convention to call the variable that you use beautiful soup to interpret soup. Um, you don't have to do this. Um, it's, like I said, it's just a convention that people use. Uh, I'm going to use it here, but you should feel free to call this anything you like. I could call this, for example, I might call this vitamin soup. Okay, vitamin soup, and now beautiful soup, right, beautiful soup is a library that defines additional methods. So if we think back to our, our candy eating example, right, we defined, or really you all um, created sets of instructions, created functions that said this is how you eat a piece of candy. Beautiful soup is a function that says this is how you, um, this is how you parse and structure and understand an HTML file, Python. Hey Python, here's how you understand an HTML file for these purposes. And what we can do is we can actually kind of nest our, um, we can nest our open statement, right? So again, we're gonna have to open that HTML file that we wrote over here. Um, and we can actually put that open statement right inside the beautiful soup, um, the, the beautiful soup method. So basically I'm saying first, right, everything that's the, 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 uh, the thing that's in the middle is the thing that happens first and then everything else happens after that, right? So even though we read left to right when we have parentheses, it's very similar to math, right? Where parentheses get done first. So first, what's going to happen is this open command and it's going to say open apple info.html, right? So obeying our parentheses, first we're going to open this file and then we're going to do beautiful soup to it, right? And we of course don't really know what beautiful soup does. Um, other than it somehow makes sense of all of that HTML markup. And now the next thing that I'm going to do, right, is create my output file that I will eventually hopefully convert this uh, big messy HTML file into some beautiful tabular format. So I'm just going to say output file equals open and I'm going to call this apple vitamin info mm, I don't want to name it the same thing, yeah, apple vitamin table.csv, right? And again, of course, I have to specify that I am writing to that file and we're all set, right? Very familiar stuff. You know, what you see is we start doing the same tasks in a lot of places. Um, now, the first thing that what, what Beautiful Soup really does for us re super effectively is it lets us target specific tags within an HTML page 
based on various things that may be unique about them. So just to illustrate this, I'm going to swap back to um, Oops, to my Chrome window here, right? And one of the most distinct things, now it's possible that there are other tables on this page. Um, just sort of glancing through it, it doesn't really look like there are. Um, I can test this out, right, by looking for tables, but if I just sort of scan through the code, it, I mean, and also looking at the web page, right, like there's one giant table on here, probably this is the only table. I don't know that for certain, um, but it's a, it's a reasonably good guess. Now, when I look at the header of my table, there's an awful lot going on here. And specifically, there's an awful lot of formatting happening. And really, I, that's probably not something that I want to deal with um, in, my, in my output file, right? And again, this is, a, this is a judgment call. This is a choice that you make when you're designing what your output file is. I think it's probably going to be easier for me to kind of write out these headers by hand in my file. Um, what I want my new headers to be than to actually scrape them from here, right? Copying out these individual things, you know, there's many rows of data here, um, would be extremely tedious. But in terms of this stuff, like it's one set of headers for the whole table, I'm going to make the call that I'm going to do that manually. So the first thing I'm actually going to define in, uh, in my file is going to be what my new headers are going to be. So I'm just going to create, um, create a variable here called my headers, and I'm going to write in you know, what I decided I want these headers to be. Now, um, why am I doing this as a string? Remember that when we output a file, we're actually outputting it as, as a string and we're kind of calling it a CSV, right? And then when we open it in a spreadsheet program, um, the spreadsheet program says, oh yeah, this is a comma separated file. I see how things are organized by commas. Uh, I'm going to split them on that and then you're going to get this beautiful tabular data. There's definitely more than one way to approach this. There are libraries that handle CSVs and I encourage you guys to explore them uh, if you continue to do this type of work. Um, you know, doing it this way is by no means perfect, but it is kind of a very simple way to, to get started with this sort of thing. Um, and truthfully, you know, truth be told, it's effective a large proportion of the time. So I'm just going to go ahead and, um, you know, create a version of my headers here. So I'm taking this from what's here. So it's like one cup slices, one large, one medium, one small, one extra small, um, which is kind of nice, right? Because it's actually coordinating with some, I mean, it's, it's, it, it seems to fit well with some of the stuff that I've been seeing. Um, in my market news data, right? It's, you know, it's using some of the same measures. Um, I see the inch measurement here, um, right, where it says, oh, three and a quarter, three inches, two and three quarters, two and a half, right? We saw some of those size descriptions. Um, I'm not actually sure what an NLEA serving is, but my guess is that it has something to do with the, um, you know, daily allotment. Um, you have to look that up. Okay, so I just created a set of comma separated headers and now I want to see what's in my data. So this is very much a trial and error kind of thing. You sort of see what works, right? Um, but if, as always, we have our print statements handy to help us um, see what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, all right, I think that my data table, right, again, just a variable that I'm declaring, is going to be somewhere um, the, the, the information that I want is in that t-body tag, right? So again, if I go back here and I sort of hover over, I see that pretty much everything I'm after seems to be encompassed in this t-body tag. And again, that there's only one t-body tag in this file. So I'm going to say, all right, take this, and what I'm going to do is refer to my vitamin soup, right, which is this, this interpretation that Beautiful Soup has done of my HTML file. I don't really know what that is, but um, I'm sort of taking for granted that it works the way they say it does. And I'm going to look and I'm just going to use this command called find. Very, very simple. All it does is look for HTML tags of that name, right? So I'm going to say data table equals vitamin soup find T body, right? If I'm lucky, what this means is that when I print out data table or I look at the value of data table, it's just going to be the stuff that's contained that it's just going to be that T body tag and everything that it contains. And so I'm just going to do a nice test on this, right? I always like to print things out. And also before I run this, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and uh, put in my output file close function, right? Probably not a bad idea to kind of do those symmetrically all the time and 
um, you know, just make sure they're taken care of. So again, if I'm lucky, this is just going to spit out the stuff that's in that data table. So I'm going to run my debug here. Whoops. Uh-oh, looks like I've run into a, uh, an import issue with my, uh, with my beautiful soup. So I'm going to have to take a second and debug that. Hopefully, once I get that set up, all of this will work fine. So we'll come back in just a moment and see if we've get, gotten that sorted. Okay, folks, so after some wonking around, I figured out what was going on. Um, Aptana Studio, as usual, being a little bit annoying. Um, so once I've installed a beautiful soup, um, it's just a download uh, that we get from... Is it up here? No, I don't see this page. Anyway, um, basically what's going to happen is you're gonna install Beautiful Soup and you may have to come back to your um, preferences uh, area where we defined our, our uh, where you defined your Python interpreter. So many of you are perhaps more familiar with this screen by now than you would like to be. Um, but what I can see in here is that it's got all these things. Uh, it has this odd thing where it has things called eggs.eggs. Uh, and I can see that Beautiful Soup is in there. So before what was the problem was is that I actually had two entries in here. Uh, two Python interpreters and one of them did not have uh, the beautiful soup uh, pointed to in it and that's why it was having trouble. Um, so if you've installed beautiful soup recently you're going to want to come in here and make sure that you see it. Um, click this apply button right just to ensure that it understands what's going on and it'll kind of do all of that work again that we saw um, that you would have seen when you first uh, sort of sorted this stuff out last week um, and then click OK and with any luck uh, this time when we run it we will see some output and in fact what we see is very very promising looking right so what we have is um, we see T body, right? That's the tag that we pointed to here when we asked to find our T body. And now we've just printed it out. And so what we're getting is all of the code, but we also see what's inside it. So obviously we're not interested in all of these TD cells um, and all of the markup that's around them. What we want to do is just yank out um, these individual uh, these individual values. Now, since we know this is a table, and a table is very similar to a uh, you know, a table is organized in rows and columns. Uh, what do we think we, we can do but actually use the same type of syntax that we did previously when we were reading in from a CSV? So we're going to see a very similar organization here where we're going to say, you know, every, um, every row, right, is going to be just like a row in our file. And so the next thing once we've targeted the table is we're going to say, okay, let's look for our data rows. And that's going to be, we're going to start with our data table, right? And we're going to say, we're going to use this as a beautiful suit method called find all, find underscore all. And again, we're just going to pass it the name of the tag that we want it to look for, which in this case is tr, right? Give me every row. So when we were looking at the CSV last week, we, we gave a special command called read lines that we can apply to a file. In this case, we're saying, listen, just find every row, right? And the result of that is going to be that it reads our data row by row. And at that point, I can then start writing my loop. So I'm going to say for row num, row. And again, it's not necessarily, I don't even know at this point whether I'm going to need the row number or not. Um, I like it because I like to know that I have it on hand. Um, but this is going to give me a really nice way to just sort of go through and say, okay, you know, for every row and for every, give me the row number and the row itself. Um, and now, again, I want to do one of these things. I could do, I could say, you know, for um, cell number, um, you know, I need to get it, uh, I want to get it in every cell. Um, so again, a very similar task to what we did last time. Um, for now, I'm just going to do a print statement. I'm just going to say print row num row, again, just to make sure that this is working and see what I get. Okay, and what we see is that there's kind of a lot of stuff going on here, but that I've got about 36 rows, right? And that each row has all of this, uh, all of this markup in it, kind of a little bit disorganized. Um, so in the next one, we're going to come back. We're going to look at getting at the individual cells, again, in a very similar syntax that we saw last week, and actually work on getting the data that we're targeting um, out of this file and into a nice table format. So we'll see you in a few minutes.